In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to St. Mary's Basilica in Sydney, whether physically or virtually, for the solemn mass of the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. In this month of November, the Church remembers and intercedes in a particular way for the faithful departed. The faithful offer masses and suffrages for those they have loved and lost, including deceased family members, ancestors and friends. Our nation recalls on Remembrance Day those who died for our country. And in this week of all souls, we offer our Mass not just for the living of our Archdiocese, as we do every Sunday, but also for the dead of Sydney and beyond. The Offertory Time will be taking up a collection for the Charitable Works Fund, a collection which has not been taken up two out of the three times this year because of the church closures. This collection goes towards the funding of Aboriginal Catholic ministry, Catholic care social services, our chaplaincies, the CCD catechist to the state schools, the Ephata Centre for the Hard of Hearing and the Seminary of the Good Shepherd. Conscious of our own need for moral and spiritual renewal, if we are to join those all, all souls being purified for heaven and those all saints already there, we repent of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is bright and does not grow dim. By those who love her, she is readily seen and found by those who look for her. Quick to anticipate those who desire her, she makes herself known to them. Watch for her early and you will have no trouble. You will find her sitting at your gates. Even to think about her is understanding fully grown. Be on the alert for her, and anxiety will quickly leave you. She herself walks about looking for those who are worthy of her, and graciously shows herself to them as they go, in every thought of theirs coming to meet them. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them 
like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds, together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lamps, but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flashes of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a cry, The bridegroom is here. Go out and meet him. 
At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you, so stay awake because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Death, be not proud. Though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkest thou dost overthrow die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. So begins Holy Sonnet 10, by the great Anglican divine John Donne, echoing the teaching of our epistle this morning, that there is hope for those who have died. Indeed, Paul's word for died, koimomenon, is often translated asleep. So Donne continues, from rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be much pleasure. Then from thee much more must flow, and soonest our best men with thee do go, rest of their bones and soul's delivery. And so in the East, the Virgin Mary's end is called her Dormition, her going to sleep. And in the West, we pray that our dead be granted not just light, peace, and joy, but especially eternal rest. This understanding of death as but a brief sleep is a far cry from the pagan view of the departed existing only as shades in the realm of the dead, never to return to the land of the living. For Christians, death may indeed be our last enemy, but he is not as mighty and dreadful as he seems. After the sleep of death comes the great awakening when those who have died in Christ will live in him forever. So Paul taunts death. Where, O death, is your victory? 
Where, O oh death, is your sting? Likewise, Dunn concludes, one short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. There's another account of sleep in our readings today. In Jesus' parable of the wise and foolish virgins, the bridesmaids, long awaiting the groom's arrival, grew drowsy and fell asleep. This is a key to our reading this parable. All the bridesmaids fell asleep in the house of the bride. That is, they died in the church that is the bride of Christ, the bridegroom. But because death is but a short sleep, they soon awoke to face their particular judgment and learn whether they would enter the heavenly banquet. There are many things we might notice here. First, all the bridesmaids expected to get into the wedding feast. That's the destiny God intended for every soul. But secondly, some by their own choices remain outside. What are these lamps, this oil, that makes all the difference? The lamps are the light of faith. And the fuel, the merits of good deeds expressing a faithful heart. If the lamp of faith is not constantly refueled by a lived love, its light grows dim and perishes. Jesus' parable doesn't divide humanity into those with lamps of faith and those without. He doesn't say that the foolish virgins had no lamps, or never fueled them, or never lit them. For a time, in fact, their faith burnt brightly. Their mistake was to think they'd done enough, had everything under control, needed no more grace or merit to enter the heavenly banquet. They imagined they knew when the wedding party would arrive, which is naive regarding any wedding, but especially since Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour so stay awake. Their mistake then was presumption and complacency, believing their salvation was secure and they needed nothing more. What's often missed in this parable is that the wise bridesmaids in the story are not without fault also. Like the drowsy men on the night Jesus was betrayed, these women fell into a deep sleep. The word used in Matthew's Gospel is different to the word Paul uses for the sleep of death in our epistle. Kathudon means sleeping one's life away, being idle and lazy. The bridesmaids should have been alert to the groom's arrival, but even the saved ones are far from perfect. But even good Christians are imperfect, can be idle or slip up, 
is a sobering reminder to us all. Yet because of their oil stock, their faithful hearts and abundant good works, the light of the saved survives. As St. Augustine put it, watch with the heart, watch with faith, watch with love, watch with good works. Make ready the lamps, make sure they do not go out. Renew them with the inner oil of an upright conscience. Then shall the bridegroom enfold you in the embrace of his love and bring you into his banquet hall where your lamp can never be extinguished. Last Sunday, I spoke of that wonderful place where I pray one day we may all meet merrily together in heaven. But this week we have intimations that not everyone makes heaven their final destination. When I was studying for the priesthood, one of my fellow students was an English grandmother named Sylvia. She undertook a bachelor's degree in theology in her 70s and a master's in her 80s. She told me once that in her Anglican days, she'd worried that some people die in no fit state to meet God and yet are not so wicked that they never should. This left her in serious doubt about God's justice and mercy. But then she discovered that the Catholic Church had what she called the merciful doctrine of purgatory. So consoling was that teaching she converted became a lay preacher for the Catholic Evidence Guild and eventually came to Australia as a missionary to agnostic theologians and dozy seminarians. After her theological education, Sylvia would have been more precise about purgatory, noting that all who die in God's friendship are assured of eternal salvation but will have the opportunity for purification to ready them for the joy of heaven. But even her earlier, less sophisticated account of purgatory as a halfway house for the not so good and not too bad, captured something of the Catholicity or breadth of God's mercy. God will stop at nothing, short of doing violence to our dignity and freedom to fulfill Jesus' prayer, Father, I want all those you gave me to be with me where I am and share in my glory. Purgatory, you might say, even more than an article of faith, is an article of hope. A promise to those whose lifelong process of conversion is still incomplete when they die. That there is still room for grace to complete its divinizing work. A Protestant friend of mine who attended so many funerals, he regarded himself as a connoisseur, once told me he liked Catholic funerals best. He found them more hopeful, he said, and importantly, he got the sense that Catholics thought they could actually do something for the dead, apart from mourning and reminiscing. He didn't grasp the theological controversies about souls in purgatory and masses for the dead. He only knew that these queer Catholic ideas made some sense to him humanly. 
It turns out he was right theologically as well. God in our scriptures and tradition reveals that it is a good and pious thing to pray for the dead. That in the economy of salvation, we have a role to play as intercessors for each other. And so can still care actively for our dear departed. That we can, in a sense, share our lamp oil with them. It's with thoughts such as these, Paul says to us today, that we should comfort one another. We profess our faith in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Gospel message reminds us to be wise and vigilant. Christ will come again. As we wait for him, we pray for the world he has redeemed that every member of the church may renew their faith in Christ and dedicate themselves to good deeds, generously supporting our charitable works. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will seek wisdom from God and respect and protect human life from, con from conception through to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all people who turn to Christ and discover peace and reconciliation in our divided world, so that human hearts everywhere may be set free from fear, hatred and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That universities and other institutions of education may be centres for truth amidst the foolishness of this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the vulnerable and dying may look to Christ with hope and penitent trust, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will be welcomed into the halls of heaven, especially all the souls that we are praying for throughout this month of November. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite you now to think of those dear departed in your own life for whom you'd like to pray in this month of November. We ask Our Lady help of Christians assumed into heaven and hope of the dead to pray with us and for us as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father of time and eternity, grant the petitions we make as we wait for the coming of Christ, your gift of eternal wisdom, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. holy indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, Terry and Richard, my assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Because current circumstances continue to impede attendance at Mass and reception of Holy Communion, I invite those who are joining us by live streaming to ask God that by spiritual communion they might receive all the graces of sacramental communion. Offer this Mass and your hunger for the Eucharist, for your loved ones, for yourselves and for the safety of all in our world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be mine.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.